there we are, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> Sunday evening, Sunday the 8th of March 2019. Hmm. 2020. Uh, perhaps at the moment some of us wished it was 2019. There's strange things happening in the world today. We've got threats of a virus. In China there are lots of people very very ill with a type of flu. In England there are people suffering with it. Two people reportedly have died uh, as a result of it. I, I don't know the full facts, I don't know the full details, but two people out of 66 million. And yet the country or parts of the country have got themselves in a bit of a panic. Uh, in Certainly in South East England people are buying stuff. They're buying toilet rolls. They're buying hand sanitizer, they're buying beer. <laughs> no change there then. But people are getting in a panic with it. Now, here in this part of France, there is a bit of panic going on. Um, I don't know how many of you understand French or have visited France. One of the things that English people notice is that when French people greet each other, they kiss each other on the cheek. Standard procedure. On a Sunday I always make sure and have a close shave because on a Sunday morning I know that I'm going to be kissing lots of women. Shake hands with the men, kiss the women. It's a French thing been going on for centuries. But various authorities have suggested that during this current emergency, this problem with coronavirus, COVID-19, call it what you will, they've instructed us not to kiss each other, not to shake hands, the bishop uh, has sent an instruction to parish priests. Now, when you walk into a Catholic church, always just inside the door somewhere is what we might call a stoop, or we might call it a font. There's various receptacles that contain water, and it's normal. When a Catholic walks into a Catholic church, they dip their fingers in the water and they cross themselves. The bishop has ordered all of that to be covered up and to stop. Panic? Hmm. Possibly it's about protecting reputation because it would harm any organisation, if a lot of their members, a lot of their visitors, a lot of the people involved with it suddenly caught this, this particular virus. Will we catch it? Well, maybe. But we're not going to catch it by dipping our fingers in the water and crossing ourselves. Now, this morning, being Sunday, some of you know this, uh, on a Sunday I go to church. I thoroughly enjoy it. Today we went to church in the little town of Polney. It's a beautiful, beautiful, very, very old church. Cold. Uh, always cold in that church, even in summer. And various people that I know arrived and some of us went, oh, good morning, or, or bonjour, bonjour. Uh, 
we had our service. Father Valentine was the celebrant today. Valentine? Anyway, very nice chap, smiles a lot. Haven't got a clue of half of what he says because he he tends to speak at normal speed and I, I have trouble with that. Um, very good service. For those of you that like these sorts of things, the Gospel reading, Le Evangile, was the passage in the Bible uh, very often referred to as the Transfiguration. Uh, some of you will know this, it's the one where Christ and Peter and a couple of the other disciples, they go to the mountain and Moses and Elijah appear. Christ has a conversation with them. And Peter, I always think about this particular passage, just imagine you are a Jew in first century Palestine, you are scripturally very well versed in everything that has gone before, you know who Moses is, you know who Elijah is, and there you are, you've gone along with your mate Jesus, your rabbi, your teacher, and suddenly there you are faced with not just your mate, Jesus, who took you away from your fishing boat and all that sort of good stuff, but now he's talking to Moses and Elijah, and I, I sort of think to myself, if I, if I met Moses, I'd love to say, what were you thinking when you parted the Red Sea? What, what were you thinking when you were leading the Israelites through the desert? What, what was going on? And Elijah, whoo! Fancy meeting him. How many things would you want to say? But Peter, <laughs> maybe he was overcome. I don't know. I, I guess he was overcome. Said, would you like us to build three tents? That was a long digression, wasn't it? Anyway, that was what this morning's uh, service was about. After the service, we went and visited a lady. Uh, my passenger is very good friends with this lady and my passenger is 77 uh, in the way of these things she tells everybody uh, the lady we went to visit is 90 if you are 90 if you're 77 perhaps you are worried that you don't want to catch coronavirus. Well, maybe you are, maybe you're not. And our very good friend who is 90, she made us coffee, she forced us to eat biscuits. Um, didn't take a lot of forcing, it may be said. And she said, I am not afraid of it. She'd lived through many, many things. She is not going to change her way of life. She insisted that we kiss cheeks because life goes on. And when you're 90 and incidentally recently recovered from a little problem with some cancer, middle of last year, what she said was she doesn't want to suffer, but she is not afraid of dying. But what she wants to do today is to go on living, living as she always has. When she has visitors, she will, while she's got the strength, and she has, uh, she will offer them hospitality, she will make them tea or coffee, she won't make tea, she hasn't got any, um, and she will kiss you on the cheeks. The two of them sat there and they had a, a certain amount of humour about the work that I'm currently doing and said, crikey, you know, the, the stuff that I'm removing from this house, this property, 
could be infected with all sorts of strange and terrible diseases, terrible illnesses. Uh, I could fall off a ladder. Oh, okay. you shouldn't say things like that because, yes, I could fall off a ladder. But the pair of them said, no, we are going to carry on. We are not going to allow our lives to be ruled by fear of a virus. We both agreed, we, the three of us agreed, that in 60 years' time, none of us are going to be that worried about it. Anyway, that was, that was my Sunday. I uh, came back here, I've done one or two gentle tasks, and now I think it's time to play trains.